Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay, a company that offers all the services you need for building your PCB prototypes. More on them later in this video. Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's talk about the Zigbox Pixel. This is an open source groove box based on a modular system for designing your own software and hardware synthesizers and so on. In other words, the author of this system has made sure his software is modular so you can easily rearrange it to create your own synthesizers, groove boxes, sequences, samplers, whatever you can think of. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. For this project, we need a couple of parts. First and foremost, the PCB or printed circuit board. Luckily, today's video's sponsor, PCBWay, stepped in and printed a handful of PCBs and shipped them within three days after I uploaded the Gerber files found on the project's GitHub page to their web store. After uploading, the PCB designs are checked by an engineer who will give you feedback if there are any problems or greenlight the order if everything's good to go. You can choose from a variety of materials and other options and as usual, the results were high quality. If you're a creator, you might be interested in sharing your project on PCBWay's web page. People can read about your project and place an order right away. And you, as the creator, will get a 10% share for each sale. So thanks again PCBWay for sponsoring this. Now let's get on with the video. Besides the printed circuit board, you'll also need a screen, a Raspberry Pi Model 3A, and here's a PCM5102A digital to analog converter, four encoders, some headers, an SD card, some cherry keyboard switches. You also need a soldering iron, and of course, solder. Start the assembly by placing the header that will hold the Raspberry Pi 3 under the board. Then solder the outermost pins first to attach the header firmly and then continue soldering all the other pins. Next, we need to place some jumpers or blobs of solder on the audio card. Place the card in front of you so all the electronics are on the other side, then connect the right two pins in the H4L area and then the left two pins in the H3L group. Don't follow the video here. As you can see, I got this wrong, which led to distorted audio output later. Turn the board around and connect the left two pins at H1L and the left two pins at H2L. Don't worry if this looks a bit crooked, all that matters here is you've shorted the pads. Now break off 6 pins from the pin header that came with the digital to analog converter and place it under the board with the shorter end of the pins facing skywards. Solder them to the board. And once that's done, take some painter's tape and cover the pins of the Pi 3 pin header. This will prevent potential shorts should the screen touch the pins. Then push the screen into its place as seen in the video and solder all its pins. Put the audio head into place as seen in the video and connect all the pins. Then push two of the encoders into their sockets on the top of the PCB. Then solder the pins from the other side. Now, cut away the inward-facing tiny metal tongue of the two remaining encoders, wear eye protection while doing this. Push them into place as seen in the video and solder the pins and the remaining tongue.
Next, install Linux on your SD card using Raspberry Pi's SD card imager. Insert the SD card into the Pi 3 and push the Pi 3 into its place. Next, solder all the key switches into place. I didn't manage to find the flat switches the build recipe called for, which prompted me to solder an extra wire to all of them to make them usable. Now I could have been finished with this build, but it turned out the PCB design itself had a flaw. One of the traces that led from the upper right key switch to the Raspberry Pi's header was shorted to one of the encoder's legs, which was a bug in the Gerber file. So I had to cut the trace around that pad and add a wire bridge manually. By the way, here I am a few days later cutting the video and the problems with the PCB already have been solved. So you can download this and just build as expected. So let's continue with the video. I quickly checked that with a multimeter successfully, put the Pi into its place and booted the system and to everyone's surprise, it mostly worked apart from that massive distortion I mentioned earlier that occurred because I had placed one of the jumpers incorrectly. And after fixing that, it was now time to test my new groove box. Okay, so this is the ZigPixel, or an early development version of this tiny open source groove box. Installing the software was quite easy. Just log into the Linux system here, then git clone the original repository, and then change its branch to Raspberry Pi 3, then update the git folder, and then make pixel. Commands should be on screen right now. If you do that, you'll end up with this screen here. Okay, so this is an 8-track, 32-step, pattern groove box and patterns can be arranged into a song. Each instrument here has its own track in a sequence. There are four elements on the screen at any given time that you can work on with the four encoders here. For example here we are on the kick drum synthesizer and we can switch through the various screens here and on any screen you can then adjust the parameters using the encoders. This is a wavetable synth so there are a lot of wave tables you can choose from. You can also click through the wave tables as you'd expect to. We'll take a look at that while I'm trying to create a pattern here. You can trigger a sound using this button down here. And this is a synthesized sound. I've spent some time before filming this video to come up with some sounds here. We can go to the sequencer using this button and you can see I've prepared a four to the floor bass drum sequence here. And we can play that back by holding down this button and then pressing this button. Right. Now we can use this key to switch to the next instrument and I've tried to synthesize a snare drum here. So let's go to the sequencer. We can now move around the cursor with the encoders. I've tried to do my best here to create a beat. We can move the cursor up and down in the octaves with this encoder and then move it left and right with this encoder. And with this encoder, we can now place some beats or notes here. Okay, I've built a sequence uh, with all the instruments at my disposal here. I don't think this is a good sequence, but it is a sequence.
yeah, enough of that. Um, we can take a look at the Ableton uh, style of arranger here. So this is a grid of all the measures you can create. If you hold down this button here, you can now insert one of your patterns into this sequence of patterns here. So here's one kick drum pattern, here's one snare drum pattern, hi-hat pattern, and so on. Yeah, we can erase them. Perhaps can see this lighter line here, so you can move this around in your sequence, and then we can go ahead and create some other patterns here. They will then be played back in sequence. While you're on the sample screen, you can also press this button here and then use this button to browse the samples. And now we can just select a sample with the encoder here. You can of course apply multiple effects. For example, here's my hi-hat and if I press the effects button here, uh, we can now add delay or reverb to this. So what to think of this? The Zigbox still is in the very early stages and its developer Alex uh, asked me to announce that he's searching for co-developers who uh, will help him optimize the code, come up with new hardware designs, design the enclosures for these devices. Please take a look at this webpage. I think this has potential because if you take a look at his designs, it's possible to just scale up these devices. You can exchange uh, the Raspberry Pi it's running on easily, add more buttons, you can add more encoders, you can add more synth engines. The building blocks are there, but the actual examples for using this, they're quite in the early stages still. It's worth keeping an eye on if you're a little bit into developing things and you could imagine yourself enjoying contributing to this project, then please contact Alex. You will find his email address on his GitHub page. Yep, yeah, and that's it for today. Zigbox Pixel, an open source groove box based on a larger framework. As you've seen in the video, building this is quite complicated at the moment because the hardware itself still is in its design phase. But if you want to give it a try anyway, all the links are in this video's description. And if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. Making videos like this is time consuming and expensive, so if you ever were thinking about supporting my channel financially, this might be a good time. You can do so on Patreon or by becoming a member of this channel using the join button under this video, or you can use the super thanks buttons for one-time donations, buy me a coffee, it's under this video. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye.